know people talk about new media. So the other day I said there's no such a thing as new media. It's a relative term. It's the so-called new media is the media of today. If you are a journalist, you are in media, that means you reflect what's happening in the world. By nature, you should be very conscious of how things were changing. The world is changing, the media landscape is changing, the way we communicate with people is changing. I think your readers change all the time. Fifteen years, I have no regret. I've been lucky to be at the right place, at the right time. It's been a fabulous run, you know, with Morgan. China is now one of the world's biggest luxury markets, but 15 years ago, when you launched Vogue here, it was a totally different story. It was. Tell us about that. 2004 I joined and we launched in 2005. Uh, there were very, very few international brands in China. The modern fashion as we know it now did not really exist then because quite a lot of brands were sort of looking at China to think, is China ready or not? And then with the launch of Vogue, it sort of convinced a lot of brands that China and the Chinese probably were ready. When you launched it 15 years ago, did you expect it to grow to something it is today? Well, to be honest, you know, we were so busy doing what we were doing. Originally, I said no to the job. I uh, just thought that the market was more a syndication edition market. You don't want your readers to have second-hand material. It's not even that. The second-hand material at the time was better than not having any material at all. At the time, I had other thoughts about what I wanted to do. Because I studied law, I always had the ambition to become a lawyer. But then this conversation with the bosses of Condé Nast, they asked me, so what would be more interesting to you? I just said, well, if we could do a Vogue in China, that would be on the level of all the top Vogue, the sort of Italian, the, the French. That would be more interesting, perhaps. So that's that's why, you know, we launched the way we did, was to showcase our ambition that times have changed. Earlier years, it wasn't easy because you were new and China was new. There was this lack of recognition. Was just, yes, people were just still waking up to this whole new concept about modern fashion. It's a wakening call. It was. But when you wanted to do a magazine of that level, you needed to work with all the big names and established professionals in the fashion community. But you had very little time to convince them. While convincing them, you also needed to be conscious of the fact that you're representing China too. So you couldn't be go around begging people. The enormity of the job, you realize it was no longer just a job in the sense that you want to be successful, you want to enjoy it. I think I matured because of that realization of that responsibility. Represent China in everything possible that we could, you know, confident, uh, positive, intelligent, uh, willing to learn, yes, but at the same time very sure of yourself and your own potential as a country, as a market, and as a group of uh, future consumers. Now it's changed. Very often by the young generation. Because the point that I'm most proud of, um, we didn't just stay at one format. We launched the Vogue Me as a millennials version. And then the whole video business, I saw this uh, entertainment mixing with fashion trend. So we launched a Vogue film. That was a new challenge. That got me excited for two years. We work with different directors, different stories to express uh, with actual scripts. It was a great experience. So you worked with a lot of local designers, uh, models and stylists, photographers. You try to nurture, groom the local talent. How have you done that? Supporting Chinese homegrown talents is more a bigger picture thing. 
to strengthen your platform and then you nurture your own talent. So that was always the plan. I, I felt that to be a strong creative uh, community or a country, you needed to be creative in many, many categories and disciplines. From first, we used the magazine as a platform to showcase them, promote them. So a lot of the Chinese designers today, you know, like Uma, Huisha, and Mash, a lot of these, their first shows had something to do with Vogue. Then we thought, okay, they needed to be more exposed to the international community. If you were not exposed, you could not talk about balancing that with your own roots and your own culture and develop something that would be international, contemporary, but also Chinese. So we started to organize them to go to have these sort of exchange programs, you know, where we send them to Milan, to America. Anna Winter supported a lot. And then we received the American designers in China and uh, introduced the market to them. And now, fast forward to these few years, we don't really need to do that anymore because this generation of designers, they are a lot more confident. And the whole mood in China is that they wanted to support Chinese designers more. The consumers are more confident of themselves. I think we were part of the whole culture and the efforts, including in our message in the magazine about women to be confident about in yourself areas of your capabilities as well as your style sense and sophistication level. Uh, those were all part of this whole efforts uh, that led to Chinese designers to come to where we are now. What's the key value you'd like to convey to your readers? Really fashion to us is a tool to express how to be a more confident modern-day woman. All the models here on the cover basically are the big models of their time. Through the selection of the people who want to put out the cover, the way we shoot them, the way we style them, the way we guide them how to look into the camera, it all comes together as a package to tell our readers that this is the woman. Typically, a Vogue girl, you're confident, you're not trying to please. That's why a lot of people comment, why on the Vogue cover people don't smile as much? I'm not averse to smiling, you know, actually sometimes I want them to smile. Their smile and their smile. Their smile, that's more about pleasing people to say, look how pretty I am, you know, look how nice I am. And their smile, that's more confident. So I don't think smiling necessarily says not confident, but you can see why. Most of these covers, they are not smiling, but they look firm. And you said, this is me, whether you like me or not, but I think you will like me. You know, if you don't like me, even if you don't like me, you will follow how I dress and how I uh, carry myself. Your daughter Angelica, Haley, she, she's a teenager and girls her age have very strong opinions about a lot of mm. issues. You know, my life is divided before Haley and after Haley. Before that, I was quite adamant that I didn't want to have family and you know, be a parent, it's too much trouble. Mm. Haley changed uh, everything. It was a conscious decision to have her, but uh, I really do feel I see things differently, I'm more patient, definitely. A lot of people say that. People, so, sometimes they think I must be a, like a tiger mom or anything, you know, <laughs> yeah, I wasn't. So she wanted to do piano, you I supported support her, her. Yeah. and then she said, no piano. Oh, I said, okay. Do you bring her to the runway circuit? Uh, yes, occasionally. Uh, it was a baby, she didn't know, you know. I held her on my lap for many years. In the industry, a lot of people sort of felt that they saw her grow, witnessed her growth. A lot of my friends say, I've changed a lot since I became a mother. I, I think professionally, personality and how I see the world. Uh, you started to see the world from a different angle, you know. And before it was all about yourself, and then another sense of responsibility uh, makes a person stronger. 
actually that marked a changing point of the magazine. We started to have a soul uh, when I introduced all these strong women's stories because I had my daughter in mind. I thought I should treat my readers as my daughter to think what's the really good inspiration to share with them rather than just the appearances. years ago, you would say, you will still be here 15 years later. I would just say, no way, no way. I can't imagine with the world changing so fast, I would still be where I am. But who knows, I might surprise myself. Hi, Lindsay. Hi. Unless you do something you're really passionate about, you believe in, and you're excited about, you're actually wasting your, your life. So very briefly, Angelica, what do you see as your biggest accomplishment in your career and perhaps in your life too? Well, I feel that I have bigger accomplishment to come. Right. I don't know because these days people live to, what, 90 or something? I really saw the evolution of the readers. You know, now you go out, you see these girls, women who really know what they want. I have to say, yeah, Vogue obviously uh, has been a great journey and a great achievement. It's uh, a joy to discuss. Yeah. You know, you don't always look back because I'm like with Karl Lagerfeld. And one thing we have really in common is that think about the future don't waste time looking back too much. So that kept him young till the end. I hope we can all be like that. Fifteen years, I have no regret. It's been a great ride. You know, fabulous people I've met. It's a beautiful industry where people love beauty. And if you love beauty, there are certain parts in your life, in your heart, uh, that is beautiful.